There are over 150 other moons in the solar system. And by the late 1970s, we were starting to explore them. The results were spectacular. The journey of discovery began with the Voyager probes. They were sent to explore the outer solar system, the gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn. Until now, these extraordinary worlds had been seen only through telescopes. It took two years for these probes to reach their first port of call, Jupiter. Scientists all over the world were gripped, waiting for the first close-up pictures of the great giant. But when Voyager started transmitting pictures back to Earth, they were in for a surprise. It seemed it was Jupiter's moons, rather than the planet itself, that held the most exciting secrets. We thought the moons of the outer planets would be lumps of ice covered in craters. And that was about it. But when Voyager started transmitting back pictures of Jupiter's innermost moon, Io, there was a strange anomaly. A young NASA scientist spotted an odd-looking bulge on the moon's side. I came in about 9 o'clock that morning to the navigation area, and the tape with the pictures the spacecraft had taken the day before was on my desk. I put them on the computer system and I displayed them. And I could see that Io, the moon of Io, was a crescent, as very often our own moon is a crescent in the night sky. And I went and enhanced the brightness, and there appeared beside Io an object, a huge object that looked like something I could recognize and could never have expected, and it completely captured my attention. I wanted to know so badly what that was that I just had to ask myself, my goodness, what is that? And the answer that occurred to me first was it looked like another moon peeking out behind Io. But when she looked closer, she realized it was something completely different. And when I explored it, I was able to find that this large, strange object, a huge plume of a volcanic eruption arising 270 kilometers over the surface of Io and raining back down onto it. So I had discovered the first ever volcanic eruption ever seen on another world besides the Earth. Io's vibrant volcanic activity is caused by the massive gravitational pull exerted by Jupiter, which squeezes and heats the moon internally. You could actually see, looking at the edge of Io, plumes of what turned out to be sulfur dioxide gas shooting up into space about 100 miles and dropping all this sulfur dioxide snow back on the surface. And the whole place is stained red and yellow with sulfur. It's an incredible place. Here was a moon to swoon over. It was far more exciting and exotic than our own boring, lifeless moon. And Io was just the beginning. Soon another of Jupiter's moons, Europa, was also wowing scientists. Europa's surface had no craters. Close up, it was covered in cracks and canyons. Europa clearly had a very young surface. We could tell that there weren't many large impact craters, and the surface was relatively smooth and, and cracked, not chasms going deep down into it, but cracks filled in with something darker. Um, a recently active surface. Looking at it, scientists realized it was similar to scenes they knew from Earth, from the poles. Europa was covered in ice. And because there were no craters, they knew that the ice must have melted and refrozen many times. And that could mean only one thing. There had to be liquid water, the crucial ingredient for life on Europa. 